I think the most interesting part of Kazuo Mez's manga is that his art style really hasn't changed at all since the 60s. He has a brand new manga coming out, I guess soon, sometime this year, but check it out. Then again, that's what makes him memorable. It's a throwback for sure, but it isn't all about the visuals. There are a lot of great themes in his stories. In Reflections, part of the three volume scary book releases, and good luck finding those, we have a classic story of vanity. First, I want to give a shout out to a user on Instagram who messaged me about this story. You know, I'm always open to requests, but mainly through Instagram since I don't read the comments here on YouTube. I'm kind of self-conscious like that. He even scanned pages for me, so if you're out there, thank you. He also informed me that Umez's Orochi is officially releasing next month through Viz. Getting their hands on another horror legend. Well, they've released some of his work in the past, but it's been very inconsistent. I guess they figured with how well they've been doing with Ito, they're gonna go full steam ahead with Umez. And, I mean, his stuff is popping up everywhere now. It's interesting, but I don't think they'll be releasing the likes of Kago or Maro anytime soon. Horror has always meant to be some sort of reflection, whether it's on society or one's own self, whatever it may be. Horror was invented to show all sorts of atrocities and the damaged insights of everyday life. Now, the other definition is to shock or scare the viewers or readers, whoever, which is by far the more popular version of horror, I suppose. Especially in the past century, a lot has changed with most horror focusing on scaring, which is fine. Umez's work finds a balance between all of the great aspects. You get some violence and gore, a lot of dark imagery, flawed characters battling with inner demons, and genuine creepy moments. Which is funny being that this looks like Astro Boy or something, but it can be scary at times. Now back to Reflections. In a lot of ways it does remind me of an Edo Galaranpo story. The whole duality of a person, obviously a reflection of one's own self. You can get it very thematic with something like this, but Umez makes sure to keep things spooky with this literal reflection taking over the life of this young girl. It's just a theme that'll always work well, struggling with yourself. Now this young girl, ever since discovering what a mirror is, becomes obsessed with her reflection, with her own beauty, snuffs those who are so-called ugly, and yes, you get a sense of vanity with that ultimately working against her. It's a lesson learned type of manga with the character ultimately befriending people she would have otherwise never paid attention to. Lots of lighthearted scenes too, which is typical for Mumez. And that's something else that makes him stand out from other horror legends, with an emphasis on comedy. And I do like the cat-eyed boy easter egg. Other than Ranpo, it reminds me a lot of just those classic gothic horror tales. These messages tangled in with flawed characters, with an element of fear. The unreliable narrator, or rather, others finding the narrator unreliable. It's all just great in this execution, but I can totally see how people might not like this story because they can't get past the art style. This isn't a stay up at night scary story, but I mean if you think about it, the situation is very creepy for sure. Also the use of harsh shadows to illustrate the more evil reflection is I think a great way to convey an unsettling moment. 